Greetings, ladies and gentlemen and viewers across the world wide web. Shout out to my fellow earthlings. Meet, 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 meet. This is your homeboy, Toon. It's the Toon Dollars, Toon 215. Back at it in full effect. And we're going to be doing another driving tour of the Spring Hill area. This is just a random driving tour. This is a continuation from my last Spring Hill video. I literally just started where I left off at. So if you didn't get a chance to see that one hour worth of Spring Hill, it was pretty cool. Check it out. We're about to explore more of Spring Hill. Um, and continue seeing what Spring Hill, Florida has to offer. We're in Spring Hill, Florida. This is a residential neighborhood. We got some landscapers on my right doing the, the some people would call it the dirty work, but I would call it the hard work. They're doing the labor intensive work of keeping the lawn up to par. So this is off of County Line Road over here in the Hernando County. Uh, area in Florida it's 74 degrees got a lot of tropical trees on my left hand side beautiful driveways, beautiful one story houses, I saw some two stories saw some two story houses, we got a refrigerator on my right hand side wow, gee golly wonder if they're disposing it they, it looks like they might be disposing it because there's nobody outside I wonder what the scrap business is like over here in Philly, that wouldn't last three hours. <laughs> if there's not a sign on it, somebody's going to take it and scrap it. We got an RV on my left-hand side. We're not far from Pasco Hernando State College Spring Hill Campus. We're traveling about 12 miles an hour. make this right hand turn we're on Baffin Circle and Dan River Drive we're turning on Dan River Drive we got a beautiful yellow canary yellow house on my left nice garage we got a few trash bins on the street side which tells me either trash day is coming or trash day probably passed most of the trash bins look empty. So that might be a sign that the trash truck already went by. No, actually one still had a bunch of debris in it. So I don't know, I'm uncertain. All right, we're at Dan River and Baffin Circle. We're gonna continue traveling straight. Mailboxes on the street side, trash cans on the street side. We got a basketball court on my left, trailer on my right, a variety of tropical trees. I see somebody on my right hand side doing some lawn work. It's an older female, it's probably a homeowner. She's sweeping up her lawn, picking up uh, fallen leaves. We're driving towards the sun, so I'm gonna try to get off of this road shortly. We're approaching Galaxy Ave. Wow, let me point at this house real quick. Cause a house with this type of apex, such a a, 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 a sharp apex, meaning like an A top on the roof, that tells me that they probably have a second floor and or an attic. You see it? You see how strong that apex is? And then they even got a back roof deck and a garage. And there's a two story house over there too. Right there on my right hand side at the intersection of Galaxy Ave and Dan River Drive. That's 219 Galaxy Ave, Spring Hill, Florida. Let's make this left hand turn. Then we get back to the one stories. We got Spanish malls hanging from that tree over here on my left hand side. I didn't know what that was until I went to like the Carolinas and then I started seeing it. We got Galaxy Ave and Dartmouth Ave. Let's make this right hand turn. And now when I watch like one of my favorite movies, uh, Jeepers Creepers, and I see the opening scene when Jeeper is throwing the body down the tunnel and they pass a tree with Spanish moss. Now I could like really understand it. Jeepers Creepers, I believe it took place in Florida, but it was in an imaginary town in Florida. So they shot it in Florida. It was like upper Florida. We're at Cactus Circle and Dartmouth Ave. 
but the town that they mentioned in the movie was was a made up town so you can't really find that town all right we're approaching county line road this is the 11,400 block of county line road we got the heritage pines active 55 plus country club living in front of us this is a private community i've mentioned that in the previous tour how on county line road there's a lot of private communities i was also speaking in the previous tour about this neighborhood spring hill how it appears to be like predominantly a lot of seniors in the area so this might be a good retiree location there's young people, but like when I went to the stores, I saw a lot of older folks, respectfully. I'm gonna make this right hand turn because we can make a right on red. There's, there's a lot of traffic coming, so. Let me turn right in three, two, one. We got this. There's golf carts on the left on that land. So right now we're driving to the main road, which is commercial highway. I think I'm gonna make a right coming up here so I can show you guys some of these little side blocks before we get to the main commercial way with the main businesses. Hamlet Circle, County Line Road. Make this right hand turn. Yo, we got these gigantic birds crossing the street. <laughs> Look at them. They're, they're, I mean, adorable. I wish you could train them to just have one sitting next to you, just hanging out. Look how big they are. They look fake, don't they? If if they weren't moving, you would have probably thought that that it was like a lawn, you know, gnome or something. Wow, look at this house over here. This house has intrigued my my um, curiosity. Look at it. Look at this house right here. It's it's a looks like a one story house. It might have an attic, but it looks nice. I like those type of one-story houses. The ones that have a whole bunch of different add-ons. Like, they have a whole bunch of different little... There's this blue car right here on my left was exiting, and they were looking at me. My bad. I'm sorry. Um, I like the ones with all the little the add-ons. Because it makes it seem a lot bigger than what it really is. palm trees nice otherworldly plants look at that plant right there that plant right there on my right looks like like it got arms it's about to like attack you darnell ave and hamlet circle let's get back to the main road we do have otherworldly plants here on earth we have poisonous plants we have venomous plants is venomous poisonous i think it's the same thing but you got like things like the venus fly trap that they like actually are 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 carnivorous or carnivorous or carnivorous there you go carnivorous uh, plants like if a mouse goes in it or if like a frog goes in it they'll eat it or they'll like attack it and i think they have venom that like or poison well i'm not gonna say venom i think venom comes from a snake they have poison that uh shock it so it becomes paralyzed we're passing hamlet circle let's make this right we're gonna merge we got one more little community over here that we can probably check out and then we'll come back up to the main road. Speed limits 30 miles per hour. A U-Haul at your door, U-Box moving container on my left. Mr. Ice on my left, AC refrigerator, ice machine services. Student driver on my right, learn to drive and get your license. All Florida Safety Institute. Don't lose your cool. Call Mr. Ice. <laughs> that's a that's a catchy phrase. So another thing is when you're living in a hot environment like this, unless you adore and truly love the heat, which I don't find many people who rave about the heat um, and humidity, you need a working air conditioner. You need a working climate controlled system that can keep not only your house cool, but your car cool. If you're operating a motor vehicle, you better have a working air conditioner in an environment like this. Because it gets hot, it gets humid, it gets muggy, it gets sticky. And unless you like it, which I don't know many people who, who, who rave about 100 degree weather. Tune, tune, oh, I love me some 103 degree weather. Tune, I just love hanging in the sun and just getting burnt and coming out with with, 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 with skin burn and all that. No, no, sunburn, no, no siree. Ah, there's a smart car parked on the lawn on my left-hand side with a handicap placard on the rear view mirror. 
Yeah, I don't really love the sun, so. I definitely would need working air conditioner in the house. I would love trees on the lawn so I can actually utilize my lawn. <laughs> if there's no trees on the lawn, it's just an empty lawn. Sheesh, you're gonna roast. And not even a lot of trees, like trees like, like this right here. Let me give you an example. This house has a little bit of trees, but enough trees they call to create shade. You see how there's shade? I actually got patio chairs over there. And there's enough shade. But you see how the front of the lawn is is, is kind of like like tree free? So it could be something like, like that with like a little bit of trees. But they gotta have some type of trees. I can't have like this house over here, right here in front of us. You see this ash blue house on my left? The one that we're up that we're approaching over here on Dandelion Court and Callaway Ave. Yeah, something like that. That needs trees. It doesn't have no trees. So I wouldn't be enthusiastic about sitting on my own lawn. You see, this one right here has one nice big tree. Sometimes those trees don't do too good on the plumbing. But I guess if it's far away from the plumbing, then it makes sense. And trees also bring bugs and all types of ants and critters. So I don't know. I guess it depends on the tree, too. Like, palm trees are cool. Like, like these, these little palm tree things right here. They're cool. Wonder if you could um, plant your own orange trees and stuff. You know what I mean? Wow, this house is, is, is fantastic. Oh, wow. It's, it's small, but it's, look at this. Oh, wow. Beautiful, beautiful house. Beautiful house. And it got a few palm trees, notice? It doesn't have much shade. It, it has some shade, but not much shade. So if you're new to the channel, let me give you a rundown of what we're doing right now. We're doing a driving tour. I do walking tours, but with walking tours, I can't cover that many square miles per hour. And I try to do these tours about an hour long. And there's only so much of the neighborhood that I can cover within an hour if I'm walking. So I utilize the vehicle as a tool. I'm able to drive, you know, 10, 11, 12 miles an hour. I vary, try to follow the speed limit. And I'm able to cover more square miles and periodically I point the vehicle to a household like I just did. We're on Caldwell and Danny Line Court. And I'll show you guys a house, you know? So we're able to look at more houses. I know some people prefer the walking view, but look at on my left and look at my right. There's no sidewalks. So walking isn't always the best way for me to do it. And then I take a beating in the sun, I get roasted like an almond nut. Um I sweat yeah so walking isn't always the best deal for me I, I i try to throw a walking one every now and then i do have a lot of walking tours especially in philadelphia i have plenty of walking tours in, in philly but i try to just keep it uniform and utilize the motor vehicle as a tool Put a lot of mileage on this vehicle just from tours not from personal use but just from tours when i got this vehicle it was a little over thirty-two thousand miles <clears throat> right now we're at thirty-six thousand two hundred and one. so i put over four thousand miles just from basically touring and it's going to continue to go up by, by the time i'm finished this cross-country trip wow look at this bird in the middle of the road long orange beak he has like dark brown feathers with like a gray neck i don't know if y'all can see him probably can't because because he's, he's so tiny well he's not tiny he, he's actually big i would say he's probably like a foot tall he got like six seven inch legs with like a three and a half inch beak like his beak is is, is pretty long and pointy but um yeah we're at cadwell street and austin Ave. actually this is a dead end on my right and on my left it takes us back to the main road so let's go to my right let's check out this dead end give you guys probably a closer look of this bird see this bird crossing the street I'm gonna go really soft. I wish I had something to tell Like some type of bread. The other day I like came out of buying fresh bread. Look at look at look at look at what's up, buddy? Oh no, don't run, buddy, don't run. <laughs> the other day I came out of we just went like got some things, some items <clears throat> to eat. We went food shopping basically. And had a brand new loaf of bread. And we happened to stop by Found Below. And I saw these gorgeous, gigantic, otherworldly birds. Like I'm talking about a dozen or two of them, probably like 20 birds. And guess what I did? I broke bread. 
I opened up my brand new Wonder Bread <laughs> and broke out like 10, 11 slices and started making like little pellets and feeding the the, the birds. And people were driving by me probably looking at me like I was crazy because it looked like I had a swarm of these gigantic three foot, four foot birds waiting next to me to be fed. But it was cool, it was a cool experience. We went home with a half a loaf of bread, but <laughs> you know, you gotta understand, mother nature needs to eat too. Got a recycling bin on my left, turned over with a bunch of plastic bottles everywhere. Must have been the wind. <clears throat> there goes that bird again on my left, he's in the grass, you see him? <laughs> He's like, you're stalking me. Leave me alone. All right, we're on Cadwell and Austin Ave. I'm going to make this right-hand turn. It's going to take us right back to the main road, County Line Road, but right around the corner, I believe we're going to have a commercial avenue, which is going to have a bunch of, of commercial businesses, like, like, the, like the big box store businesses. All right, let's wait here one second so I can tell you what's across the street. We got a wasabi smoke shop. We got a maple tree deli, full service automotive repair, a tattoo business they do tattoos it's called tattoos um and we have a a jewelry pawn coins antique business you can pawn stuff so if you want to pawn your jewelry antiques or you probably can buy stuff there too because i'm sure pawn shops sell stuff right across the street there's a little living community that there's a giant sign i don't know if y'all can see it it's a banner it says if you lived here you'd be home now I think they're leasing. It's like little private apartment stuff across the street, whatever you want to call it. Apartment units. All right, you can hit South Route 19 on my left or go north on my right. We're gonna go north. I've been all up and down north and south. I even went to a post office over here and all that stuff on if you go south. Um, we got a 7-Eleven across the street on my left-hand side. We got another living community across the street that's a lot of, of, of like, R, it's an RV resort, but it has like like the trailer homes and all that. Entering Hernando County. See, this is Hernando County. We got a hemp outlet on my right hand side. Be interested to take you guys through through these these, these little plazas, wouldn't it? I, I don't know, cause if not, you guys aren't really gonna get a good view of it. Iglesia Oposento Alto on my left. Carmelo's Corner Restaurant on my left. Let's let's go straight and then go around. We got a hair business right here. We got several other businesses such as Boomers. They got Trump Country Unit 78. Tattoo business again. Executive title services, a dispensary, a hemp outlet dispensary, Legend Nails and Spa, Florida Tropics Realty. Lilium Miranda, realtor. Changing Lives. That's her realty um, SUV. I'm gonna make a right. And I'm gonna take you guys over here through the next part of the plaza. We got all their mailboxes right here. Check this out, all their mailboxes. A trail on my left with tons of flags. This is that Carmela's uh, Corner Restaurant. It looks like it's a Dominican restaurant because they got a Dominican flag, an American flag, and a Dominican flag. Beer and wine, breakfast and lunch, and so on. We got car stereo services, truck and ATV, uh, Corner Cafe, massages, sweepstakes, THC hemp, American tint, tint services. So this is like a little plaza with several more businesses. Treasure Chest has a new owner. Senior Fun Center, right here in front of us. Entertainment only, great prizes. Maybe they play like bingo, things like that for the older folks who wanna, you know, socialize and whatnot. Kicker Performance Audio, so this is a car stereo business on my right. There's a sign business in front of us. There's a Paintaholics business, professional painting services. Paintaholics. Oh, check out this little S10 on my left. This S10 is dropped, you see it with some rims and all of that. Kind of pimped out like pimp my ride and they had a banner on the front windshield that says chump change cuban seed cigar the hand rolled cigar business on the left hand side too for those of you who enjoy a cigar all right we're going back to the main road this is commercial way 
I'm not gonna be able to dip into every plaza, but I'm gonna dip into the plazas that I can that look like they have something, you know, interesting to look at. Because if I were to just drive on this main road, then you wouldn't really see much but the main road. We got an older gentleman on my right hand side with a cane walking. Gray shirt, white slacks, blue hat, and some black shoes. Place Plaza on my right, Palace Grand on my right. New Life Christian Church on my right hand side. You see, that's only a church in the plaza. So I'm gonna turn it there. We got a Dollar General on my left, but I try to turn in the ones that have like several plus businesses. Caribbean Drive, we're passing Caribbean Drive. We got a Dairy Queen on my left. Florida Springs on my right. Insurance Health Life Senior Services on my left. Flora World on my right. I guess they sell yeah, ceramic tile contractor and so on. Pasco, Hernando State College on my right. But in my previous tour of this area, I mentioned how, you see this is Pasco Hernando State College. Ideally, it'd be helpful if you have a car to travel in this neighborhood because it's a lot of highways and a lot of main roads. You saw that gentleman walking, you know, you, you could walk here if you want to get the extra, you know, workout. It's good for your heart. Hideaway, storage on my right, it's a storage place. Um, but the thing is, is it'll take you a long time to get there. Family car wash on my right, auto detailing and so on. We got an Arby's on my left. Bay Dermatology and Cosmetic Surgery on my right. We got several businesses on my left. Maybe I should start merging left or I should merge right. We got Burger King. I think we got several businesses on my left. Let me let me merge the left so I can show you these, these businesses. This is a good little plaza. Wow, I just missed that, that entrance. That would've been awesome to actually get. I think we can get back to it. There's another entrance right in here. I just would have loved to start back here. OCD's telling me you should have started back there, genius. Because that's the back of the plaza. I don't want to start in the middle of the plaza and then have to do a double round. So matter of fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a trick move. I'm going to bust a U-turn here. We got Burger King on my right. There's a little gas station, Quickie Mart on my right. 329 a gallon. I'm going to make this left here, right? We're at Pepper Street to my left, Applegate Drive to my right. It's the same road, but it changes once you cross the street. We got Hernando West Plaza on my right. We're gonna make this U-turn. And then I'm gonna start from the top of the plaza and I'm gonna go through the plaza. So you have to see some, some of the businesses, you know? Something different. This will coincide with part one tour. If you see part one of this tour, you will notice the residential neighborhoods. This part two, you will see some of the residential neighborhoods, but then you will see some of the businesses that accompany the residential neighborhood. So it gives you an idea to know like, all right, if I move to this neighborhood, these are the type of resources and places that I'm gonna have to you know, shop at and whatnot. All right, let's make this U-turn here. We got a green arrow. See, I could have went through this plaza right here, but let's make this left on 1430 Commercial Way, and we're gonna come through at the top of it back here. There's a bunch of businesses over here. Right there would have been the middle. There's businesses on the left and on the right. I ain't wanna be repetitive and pass stuff twice. So this way, if I pass it once, then you'll just see it once. You know what I mean? If that makes any sense? You know what I mean? Or do you know what I mean? They're like, no, Tune, we do not know what you mean. We just passed the Twisty Tree. It looks like a giant ice cream cone um, business. Pretty in interesting. Let's make this right. Let's enter the plaza right here. We got a Geek Squad right there. Geek Squad, he's texting. Sir, you're texting. <laughs> Say, no, he's, he's probably looking up the address on the GPS. Nature Coast Commons. We got Aldi, Pesmar, Dollar Tree, Tuesday Morning, David Bridles, West Marine, Ross, Anytime Fitness, and Best Buy. Let's make this right and start entering the plaza. We got, all right, matter of fact, we got a 7-Eleven. You guys know what 7-Eleven looks like, right? Let's see if there's a back exit over here. Or I can exit the back of the 7-Eleven. Gas is 327 a gallon here. Perfect, this leads us straight to the Audi. Audi is a supermarket. We got those in Philly, so I can tell you what that is. Some businesses, I can't tell you what they are because we don't have them in Philly. Maybe if you're watching and I don't know what something is, maybe you can help me. We got an Aldi's. Check it out. We got a Blown Away Hair Lounge. A Spa One Nails. An Anytime Fitness. 
we got an older gentleman that just got dropped off by his wife and he got his his his, his sports sneakers his sports show he got his headband he about to get that workout on boy he going into anytime fitness and he had his wife drop him off a Sally beauty supply on my left a west marine on my left looks like they have marine like kayaks and stuff stings for the water dollar tree we got the spirit of halloween on my left we got a davis bridal all right before i get too far i'm gonna make this right hand turn i'm gonna show you guys this little ice cream cone looking business that i was telling you guys about over here it's a giant ice cream cone i think it's cool i think it's cool i think if they brought this to philly that it'll be a hit because it's, it's it looks so pleasing to, to the eye like it looks like it would attract children all right, let's go. Let me see. How can I do this without being repetitive? Um, go left, go right, go right. Or I can go right, go left, go left. I think I'm going to go right, go left, go left. I feel like I'm putting in cheat codes to a, a PlayStation remote. Go ahead, ma'am. You're more than welcome to go. We have a senior citizen right here. She needed to pass. I let her pass. All right, so we're gonna make this left right where Aldi's at, but I'm gonna make another left. That's just so y'all can see the ice cream business I was talking about. I think that's like advertising in itself. That's like a giant billboard. Oh, Aldi, yo, Aldi's is hiring. Apply online. So if anybody's interested in working at Aldi's, and if you're in this area, then hey, you know, Aldi's is hiring. Let's make this left right here. You already saw 7-Eleven. That's gonna lead us to this ice cream joint. Look at this ice cream joint. See the ice cream cone on my right? It's literally an ice cream cone. I think that's a clever form of advertising. Like for example, if you had a taco business and you made a gigantic taco as as the, the entrance of the business, or if you had a burger joint or whatever, look, 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 I'm actually gonna drive through it. <laughs> I'm gonna drive through the drive through it. I'm not really getting ice cream, but check it out. I'm gonna just go through the drive through. I wonder if they open. Probably not, right? But look at Yo, we just drove through the ice cream joint, y'all. Check it out, check it out. It's a gigantic ice cream cone. Thingy majiggy. That's cool. Let me point the vehicle to it so that you guys can see it. It's called Twisty Treat. Look at that. That's neat, isn't it? You guys might have this in your town, but I know my Philadelphia viewers who are watching this don't have this in their town because we ain't got this. But it looks cool. It looks appealing. And like I drop by, oh, I, I want an ice cream. You know what I mean? Like it makes you want an ice cream. Clever form of advertising. Whoever thought of that design. All right, we got a Wells Fargo on my right hand side. That's pretty obvious. It's a bank. We got a Cracker Barrel. This Cracker Barrel. Hey, if any RVers are watching, check it out. They actually have RV slides that you can stay at. No, no longer. You, you don't need to run around Walmarts anymore. I mean, you could. Well, some Walmarts do allow you to stay, but check this out. These slots right here that I'm about to show you, this is top secret. Say that's not top secret. It says bus and RV right there on the bottom. You see it? And it's a really long slot. And my RV actually fits here. It fits here with the trailer and everything right here. Look at, look at. Boom, I've parked right here before. So, yeah. It's cool. And Cracker Barrel, I've never eaten at a Cracker Barrel. Never in my entire life. I've always heard about them. Um, I think they sell breakfast, lunch, dinner, and they also got like a country store so you can buy stuff. But I've never been there, so I wouldn't be able to speak from experience. All right, across the street, we got the Pet Smart. So we missed the Halloween store, the Pet Smart. We went to Tuesday morning. Boom, we can recontinue right here at Best Buy. Best Buy, boom. So y'all know what Best Buy is, it's an electronic store. Let's start with, with uh, Pet Smart. Because we left off by David's Bridal and PetSmart. So let's make this right. We got PetSmart. We got Tuesday morning. You know what's interesting? When me and my wife first saw this business, I was wondering, like, it, the Tuesday morning, what, what, first of all, what do we sell there? Probably home goods, right? Secondly, like, why would you name it Tuesday morning? It makes me feel like I should only shop here on a Tuesday morning. Like, if I'm here on a Thursday morning or on Thursday afternoon or on a Sunday night, then I'm not here at the right time. Tuesday morning, like, did they have, like, their first born on a Tuesday morning? Did they become a millionaire on a Tuesday morning? Did they win the lottery on a Tuesday morning? Why is it called Tuesday morning? So maybe that's something that you guys can help me out with. They're actually hiring on Tuesday morning. So maybe if you want to come and apply Tuesday, maybe come visit on a Tuesday morning and you might get hired. Tell them two sent you. Say no. <laughs> we got a Best Buy right here. I'm going to let this older gentleman cross the street. Best Buy, where you get your electronics and all of that good stuff from. 
We're approaching an overstock furniture and mattress on my left. I think that's self-explanatory. We got a Ross dress for less on my left-hand side. On my far, 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 far right off of the screen, you guys can't see, but there's a GNC. I think GNC sells vitamins, right? We're now approaching a JC Penny. Yeah, we used to have a JC Penny in Philly, didn't we? I mean, we had a couple. We had one in like Center City, uh, around City Hall, and then we had the one that was on the Roosevelt Boulevard, next to Macy's. Who remembers Strawbridge Enclosures? Was it St Strawbridges or Strawbridge Enclosures? I don't even remember the name of it, but I know it was like this type of store. JC Penny, Macy's, and Strawbridges was all kind of like similar businesses. Like, like I wouldn't say high end, but I would say like middle end, like mid mid range clothing, basically dresses, slacks, shirts, ties, things of that nature. Because I used to shop there a lot with my pop when I was a kid. My pop was in management for thirty plus years. He ran businesses, and he always my pop daily wore slacks, button up, tie, tucked in shirt on a regular basis. Wow, look at this smart car. Well, it's faded. It's faded like what? It's super duper faded. But they're still getting that good gas economy. Look at that. Well, it's faded out of this world, guys. Ah, oh, it says Beetlejuice on it. <laughs> it got the Beetlejuice from, from the movie Beetlejuice. Like that worm, that black and white worm from the movie. That's cool. The reason why I'm laughing is because when I put a poll, when I told you guys to come up with names for this smart car that I'm driving, Y'all came up with a dozen names. Then I took the most popular names and I put them in a poll and Beetlejuice took the poll. Beetlejuice, I like it kind of because of the movie. You know, the dude from Beetlejuice, not Volkswagen Beetle, but Beetlejuice from the movie and they actually got the Beetlejuice sticker there. So that paint is fading. Now something interesting, I'm gonna let you guys know of an interesting fact about these smart cars before we go to the next lot on my left. Smart cars, they weigh 1800 pounds. Um, it's not because of the body panels. The body panels are plastic. So all those panels are plastic. The doors, the hoods, the trunk, the bumpers, everything's completely plastic. Below it is a steel frame. The steel frame is designed, this is made by Mercedes-Benz. Smart, smart car is made by Mercedes. That's who designed it. Swatch, you know, the Swiss watch and all that. Um, sold the idea, pitched it to Mercedes. Mercedes joined forces and they made smart car, right? Smart car um, has a steel like a roll cage built below the plastics that you guys see that are the fenders and all that the paint job is infused into the plastic panels so normally when you paint a car i've painted a few cars myself if you guys are familiar with my channel you guys seen that i showed you the cars that i painted i even documented the process of repainting them so if you haven't checked it out just explore my channel there's over 1400 plus videos on my channel not only just tours but a variety of other content and um, you know that, or if you don't know, when you paint a car, normal cars are base coat, clear coat, or primer, base coat, clear coat. You lay a primer, then you lay a base coat, which is no shine, then you lay the clear coat over it, right? Or if you do the epoxy like a Mako job, you might just get the shine in the paint job, right? With the smart cars, the paint is infused into the plastic. Don't ask me how they do it, because I'm not that, that you know, savvy yet. But look, we got Walmart on my left, and they got a beer and wine and spirits here. They have their own private beer and wine and spirits, which I thought was interesting. I found out that when you go down south, you got a lot of businesses that are in on the liquor game and the beer game. They got the grocery that's allowed this, this couple to, to, to walk by. She has a tie dye shirt. He's wearing all black. They both got sun shades on. Um, yeah, but mind you, let me make make a note here. This Walmart has helped me upload the vlog to Toonby Chillin'. Yeah, Walmart's coming handy. They got free internet. So if you park, I actually parked right here. The other day on my left-hand side, right in front of where this bus is about to pull up to, right there. I parked right there. I put I put on my flashes. I had my laptop here and I uploaded my 50 gigabyte file, 4K video to Toonby Chillin'. The episode vlog two, showing the behind the scenes of what we're going through on the road. I parked here to get free internet. And it uploaded within like an hour, hour and a half. Not bad, not bad at all. But yeah, so that's a little fun fact about the about the smart cars. That so that was faded because 
Hey, it's stood in the sun a lot. Maybe, maybe this, um, let's allow this young, lovely woman and this Mini Cooper to pass us. Um, she's from, yeah, Florida. I thought it was Massachusetts, but it was from Florida. We got an RV over here. Okay. This is a, a trailer that you can pull with a pickup truck. I'm just going to come over here and take a little sneak peek. Take, take a little sneak peek, a little sneak peek. Take it out, a Jayco RV trailer. He's pulling it on his dually pickup truck. I like that, man. I like the duallys a lot. Landscaping maintenance. Oh, we got another RV over here, too. We have a Class A. Okay, oh, I was about to make a, a left to the middle of nowhere. We got a Banfield Pet Hospital. Yeah, the smart car is three cylinders. You, you know how most standard cars, like a Toyota Corolla, Honda Civic is four cylinders. You know how you got like SUVs like a Ford Explorer or Pathfinder might be six cylinder or Toyota Tacoma might be six cylinder or you get to the to the V8s like the Ford um, F-150 or the 250s and all that might be eight cylinder or you get to something greater, maybe 10 cylinder, you know, you got the, the Lamborghinis that are what, 12 cylinder and so on and so on, right? More cylinders? The smart car is three cylinder. <laughs> So there's only three cylinders working here. I, the only other car that I had that was a three cylinder was when I first started out doing tours with, which was my 2006 Honda Odyssey back in 2017, 2018. Um, I got rid of that, but it was a great van. Really loved it. But it but it had the feature where it would run on three cylinders to save gas. It was on eco mode. So if you wasn't going fast, it would run on three cylinders to save gas. Look at that Class A. That's a Class A RV. Nice RV, might I add. A Forza. That might be diesel. Yeah, it looks diesel. Um, 340 horsepower. Wow, it straight up tells you on the back of it. 340 HP. But, um, so, yeah. It has three cylinders. And the uh, Honda Odyssey had three cylinders. But it was really a V6. It was, it was a V6, but if you was on the highway doing like high speed, you're soaring it, it'll run on six cylinders. If, if you was lightly feathering the pedal, it'll run on three cylinders. And I'm one of the feather pedals. I don't really floor it. I'm, I'm not a speed racer. Like, I don't really push it, you know? All right. Let's go to the right here. I, I think there's there's another little business over here. Little business front. As you can see, they got a Walmart. Walmart pretty much has a lot of the basic things that you may or may not need. There's a plaza across the street. On part one, I spoke about meeting a Philadelphia man who was from the Taconi neighborhood from Philly. Um, oh, there's the check it out. There's a, a sweet frog premium frozen yogurt business on my left and a GameStop. Let's let's go through here and then we'll go across the street. I spoke about meeting a gentleman from Philadelphia at this Chinese store here. He said that he lived here for 33 years, something like that, a little over 30 years. It was at the Chinese store across the street from here, so we might as well just go through that. They got a mattress firm. Okay, they got a mattress firm over here. We got those in Philly. Nothing to be hype about. <laughs> but we don't got a sweet frog. Check out this sweet frog premium yogurt spot. Frozen yogurt. There's an AT&T and a GameStop. Yeah, we got GameStops. GameStops are pretty common. Check out that large Her Hernando Beach sign right there. You see it? it? Says it right there. See it? The Hernando Beach. You can see through the gates. All right, we're gonna exit. We're gonna go out there. There's a CVS pharmacy across the street. Those are pretty common. The only difference is about these CVS pharmacies, they sell beer, wine and beer. I, I'm gonna kick her out of that because like, it's amazing. Because in Philly, the only way you can get beer or wine is if you go to either a beer distributor, like, you know, there's beer delis and all of that, or if you go to a wine and spirits or a bar, right? Here, it's like everybody's in on the alcohol game. Like it would be tough, you know, I speak of this respectfully, but it would be tough being an alcoholic who is trying to clean up and sober up in an area like this where every single store you go to has alcohol. If, if you're a recovering alcoholic, you know, you go to the AA classes, then you go to your CVS to pick up your medicine or to go buy some Pampers, boom, you got alcohol. Then you go to Walmart, boom, there's alcohol. Then you go to Save-A-Lot, boom, there's alcohol. Well, I don't know if they got save a lot down here, but you know what I'm talking about, right? The Hernando B sign on my left. There's police on my left, too. I'm going to try to cross the street and go into the plaza across the street if that's even possible. See the sheriff right here on my left-hand side? Hernando County Sheriff's Office. 
but yeah so that's that's kind of tough you know it's kind of tough you gotta put your mind in the perspective of a, it's it's like <clears throat> it's like a substance abuser you know in um Kensington in North Kensington on one strip of about 11 12 blocks we have an opioid crisis right and you got to put yourself in the mind of the opioid user you know if if you're in an area where there's that available at every other corner then you know it's kind of tough to kick the bad habit all right don't make this this right boom we're we're here now we got actually dental group yeah it's it's, it's tough tough business it's a tough subject it's a sensitive subject because some people have no empathy for those people who are stuck on a substance some people understand completely so it's like a 50 50 playing field there when you talk about that stuff right, let's make this left we're at the plaza that was across the street all right we got a little caesars here i'm gonna tell y'all fun fact I've never tried Little Caesars in my entire life till I was like in my 20s, right? And it was when they started bringing them to Philly and they made the $5 pies. That was the first time I've ever tried Little Caesars. And to be honest, I think I've only ever had the $5 pies and the cheesy breadsticks. I've never tried anything else on their menu because they do sell like specialty pies, but I've never tried their specialty pies. We got a Beals outlet on my left. I have no idea what that is. I'm only assuming they probably sell like household goods, Beals outlet. This is that China one. This is a China spot right here. This is that Chinese restaurant from the story in part one when I talked to the dude from Taconi, Philadelphia. Long story short, if you're only catching in part two, um, I was eating here. I ordered some food here the other day and the dude behind me happened to be from Philadelphia. He said, oh, you're from Philly too? And he told me he was from Taconi, which is only about 15 minutes from me from where I'm at in Philly. Um, so yeah. Sheriff's Ranches, thrift store on my left. Cool, it's a thrift store. Liquor outlet on my left. Triple A travel agency on my left. A dental business on my left. A Publix on my left. I always thought Publix was, was a storage spot, but now I'm, I saw already two Publix supermarkets. So I guess Publix is, I'm gonna allow this this, this senior. You wanna you, you, you go by, ma'am? No, okay, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm in your way. Um, supermarket, yeah. So I, I see, I seen a couple of Publix supermarket. I thought Publix was only like a, like a storage unit. We we got a female here that's that's about to cross with some cupcakes. I was about to let her cross, but she doesn't look like she wants to cross in front of me. So I'm gonna allow her to cross. She, let me just describe what she had. She had like two dozen cupcakes and some balloons. So she's probably celebrating like her her, her child's party, like a birthday party or something with cupcakes. I care. Speaking of cupcakes, I haven't had a good cupcake. I haven't had a cupcake in over five years. Let's just say I haven't had a cupcake in a long time. I don't eat many sweets, but I haven't had a cupcake in a long time. That sounds good. I just don't like a lot of the cream top stuff. There's a little soft whipped cream stuff. Nah, I, I could deal without it. Um, we got Barber Shop on my left. It's called Barber. Welcome to Spring Hill Barber. Miracle Ear. <laughs> an, an ear facility. Um, we got Beauty by... Um, Adi on my left and PJs. Cool. Yeah, my so let's do a follow up on my ear because I know I think the last time I talked to you guys about my ear problem was in South Beach. So my ear problem. So I did. So some people say, hey, two try antibiotics, two try ear ear drops. So I tried some ear drops. But when this first started, over the counter ear drops made my right ear worse. It made it inflamed. It swelled up my canal. So it became as tight as, excuse my my potty humor, it became as tight as a butthole. <laughs> like like my right ear, you know how your canal is like is like a straw? Well it got tight, it got super tight. Like 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 make a tight finger and try to put your take one of your hands, make like the A-OK -okay sign, make it tight and try to shove your finger through it, and you can't, that's how tight my right ear canal was. So I believe the over-the-counter drops made my right ear canal inflamed. So then I, then they say, too, try the syringe thing. You need to be syringed. I've, you know, tried the syringe thing. Um, the thing is when it's sealed, the syringe thing isn't gonna do nothing because the skin is pushing up on flesh, right? So then I went to an emergency urgent care center down here in, in Florida. I saw the doctor, I saw the specialist. 
She looked at it for half of a whole 50 seconds or so. Then she prescribed me some steroid with anti-microfungal. She had put steroid, some type of liquid drop. The drop was like 300 bucks, but thanks to the insurance, we got it for like 19 bucks. Um, and then she gave me some antibiotics, 10 days worth, two pills a day for 10 days. So I took that. Um, the antibiotic drops, oh my gosh, they were torture. They was like, they were more painful than, than anything. Then I did research on them and I didn't find out to after that everybody who's experienced, nine out of 10 people who have experienced these drops had horrible, horrible. They said that these drops should be removed off the shelf. They like, I've, I've, I've read so many like poor, poor um, re reviews on it. I was like, man, like I'm, I'm silly for not reading up on the stuff that she gave me before I even putting them in my ear. I'm surprised that she would recommend them to me because they were painful. Like, I don't think the people who created the damn drop actually, or the dang drop actually tried them to know what they feel like because they feel like excruciating pain. My brain was burning. My ears were burning. Oh, I couldn't sleep. I was in the worst pain, like next to two fake pain. It was probably the worst pain. It was, it was like, I'm telling you, I, I, from a one to 10 scale, I rated a 752. I'm telling you, it was bloody excruciating pain. So I tried the, the drop for like a day or two. This oh we're we're at another plaza, y'all. Check check it out. We got access healthcare on my right. We got a rehabilitation business in front of us. Uh, we got a medical doctor right here, and we got a jeweler and a subway. Wow. So this is mostly this plaza is dedicated to, to healthcare. So I tried it for about two days because she said try it for 10 days with, with the, the antibiotics. I'm like, no, no, no. Every time I took the drop. And my ear got tighter and it felt like my brain was going to explode like like the canal the walls wanted to go through each other like the matrix i'm telling you those things were torture so i i I'm, i read one of the the um reviews where the dude said that he that he had a, that he decided to stop taking them and like two three days later his ear op opened up so i said okay let me let me try that maybe my guy's on to something so i stopped taking them i'm sorry i had to and little did we know like two days first of all a day later the, the pain slowly subsided it wasn't burning fire pain anymore and then like two days later my my ear canal started loosening up so like, okay cool so i kept taking the antibiotics then we got a plaza right there across the street with uh, all the zone let's go here uh, i i kept taking the antibiotics because i know that that's going to do the work from the inside and i stopped taking those drops seriously I, we bought like three different over-the-counter drops Two of them, once I read the reviews on them after, I said, let me not even take them, so we wasted money there. The first one I tried was with inflamed the ear. The one she gave me, so we got like four separate drops. The one she gave me are like, psh, like su suicide, like they are dangerous. <laughs> um, and then the antibody pills. So I found relief from the antibody pills and I was dumping like at, at the Avils and the Tylenols because they was really helping with the pain. I had the excruciating, throbbing headache. Three, four days later, my right ear started the pain was subsiding and it started opening up, right? And then boom, what happened? I don't know if the infection decided to go from one ear to the other. We got palm tree dentistry on my right and Liberty Tax Service on my right. But then it started to infect my left ear, man. So as my right ear started to get better, we're going to this other plaza right here across the street. It's called Hern Hernando West Liquors, Sunrise Plaza. So, let me read these to y'all. We got the Pitalu grill on my right, curbside pickup. We got another grill in front of us that's open. We got hearing aids in front of us, contour hearing aids. We got CBD, Crantum, glass vape. We got AJ's aluminum ink on my right. We got fireball liquors in front of us. We got several other businesses like a hairstyle spot on my right, Ivy Nails, Global Trucking, and so on. All right, so that's enough of that. So, as my right ear started to heal, and I started to hear from my right ear, the left ear started getting infected and it sealed on me. It, it, there was one day where both ears sealed. And I was like, I experienced being deaf. And I've always had trouble hearing um, throughout the years because I listen to loud music in my ugly Betty and my Civic, unfortunately. In my younger years, I used to listen to excruciating loud music. Like I can say it's loud, y'all won't understand how loud it is until you sat in the car. Let's just say I could park my car on one city block corner and you can hear it crystal clear on the other city block corner, loud and clear, like if it's a concert. That's how loud the music was. So, I'm, I'm, I'm a car audio enthusiast. I'm what they call an audiophile. 
Google it. Google what the term audio file means. A U D I O P H I L E. I love high quality sounding equipment. So that was my problem when I was a teen growing up. I used to build cool car systems. So um, and and anyway, I don't listen to loud music anymore. Like I barely listen to the radio. Go figure, right? How ironic for being a teenager who loved loud music. Now I'm a young adult. I can care less for loud music to an extent. So um. It got to the point where both ears were, were were sealed. So I'm bad and I'm like, whoa, like, like I'm like, how am I gonna do these tours? Like, come on, like I'm I'm in Florida, like I'm in Miami. At the time I was going through this trouble in Miami, I'm like, man, like this is the worst thing to go to when you in Miami. Like you trying to like pimp out and have fun. I wasn't gonna be pimping, but I was trying to have have fun, you know what I mean? Alright, so we got 7 Eleven right here. Let's make a complete U-turn here and go back to the main road. Uh, we got Bank of America on my left and the Sunoco across the street. 7 Eleven's 327, Sunoco's 327. So they're pretty much the same price. So the day when they when I lost both of my ear hearing, remember the left ear started aching, the right ear started healing, but it was sealed. I took the syringe because I used to have a syringe from Philly. I left the one from Philly, so we bought like three, four different syringes here in Florida because I couldn't find one that actually worked. So one happened to work a little bit. I got a chance to clear out my right ear and poop, like pop, like 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 a like a volley of air went through my ear and I'm like, whoa, I can hear from my right ear. It was still tight, it was still tense, it was still achy a little bit, but it was healing. The good news is now I can hear from my right ear. It went from like a week and a day that I couldn't hear from my right ear. I was only hearing from my left to when I lost both of them to now I like it like got to the point, let's make this U-turn. Where I had no choice, we're on Spring Hill Drive. It was, it was like listen. It, it, it was do or die. It was like, I, I now I lost both of them. I got to do something because I can't even navigate the vehicle safely without hearing my ambience that's around me. So I went in, I, I, I unclogged the right ear. Cool. The left ear sealed off. The left ear got achy. The left ear got painful. Oh my sweet baby Javibus. I continued taking the the antibiotics, which which I say they, they, they were the key to, to me being successfully cured or, or to helping. So let's make this right over here on commercial highway. Um, so, boom, the left ear starts to heal up, right? I run to the end of the antibiotics, cool beans, boom. My left ear, I could hear again, boom, at the time. My left ear opened up, I can hear, woohoo! You know? Let's make this right, we're on commercial highway. We got an auto parts, advanced parts store on my left, and we got a K um, gas station and a shell, and that looks to be it with the businesses. There you go. So we reached the end of the businesses over here. I'm going to go make a U-turn. I'm going to come back up to Commercial Highway and pass all the businesses that we passed. And then, yeah, we'll continue chatting. Uh, we got a Suncoast Credit Union on my right and Auto O'Reilly Parts on my right and a Taco Bell and a McDonald's. So there's not like a huge business district here, but there are some scattered businesses, but it wasn't as dense as the other area. For example, there's a Red Lobster. Let's make this, this U-turn here. We got a Win Dixie food market and stuff. So my right ear came back, started he healing. My left ear started healing, right? It was still a little swollen, but it started. So I, so basically, I had like like 60% of hearing on my right, like 15, 20% of hearing on my left. So I couldn't hear wholeheartedly on both ears, but I was able to hear, right? And I'm doing these tours, I'm kicking them out, and y'all don't know what I'm going through, but I'm kicking them out. So. The, the medication finished, the antibiotics finished, boom. My, my, my hearing came back a little bit more from my left, but like two days after the antibiotics finished, guess what happened? I woke up, my left ear started aching again. Oh my gosh. Then guess what? A day later, my left ear sealed again. So now, remember, the whole entire problem started with my right ear. My right ear is, is back to about normal. Almost close to it. I, I I can hear I would say 70 to 80 percent from my right ear. So that's so that's good. My left ear right now, as we speak, as I'm doing this tour, my left ear it's not completely swollen. Zero to hundred, I would say it's like 20% swollen. Zero to hundred, how much I can hear from my left ear? I would say like 40%. A one through ten pain, I would say. It's like a one or two pain scale. It's not excruciating pain. I do feel like a like a like a like a little ache, a slight ache, minor ache. Um, but it's not as bad. 
um, but it's two days, three days, maybe four days after my antibiotics finished, and it kind of crept back up on me. So I'm hoping I'm, I'm you know, I'm tr trying to stay positive here. I'm hoping that it doesn't continue. I've, I haven't battled with ear infections since I was like probably like 10, 11. I haven't had an ear infection over 20 plus years, so it's somewhat surprising. It originally started. To my knowledge, from Old Salt Beach, it's like a dog-friendly beach park around the Flagler Beach Palm Coast area. I had went to three beaches before the third beach, where I think that's where I got the infection from. I was doing research, and it, like, there's bacteria in certain waters that you go into, and if you don't properly dry your ears after, and that sits in your ear, then boom, you know, you can get an infection. So I think that's where that's where I pinpointed it too because I was fine at the other beaches. The weekend of that old salt beach, that's the name of it, old salt beach. It's like a dog friendly beach in on the eastern portion of Florida. I think that's where I got it from. And since then I've been battling it, y'all. And tell me about it. I am I am cautious of getting back in beach waters. And if I do get back in beach waters, I'm not dipping my head in the water. No survey, I'm sorry. And I used to go in like so effortlessly. Not that I was much of a swimmer, but I would like hang in the water. Um, but yeah, guys, like no way, no sorry, you're not getting me back in that water. I'm sorry. And especially not not until my ear ears th thoroughly heal. And if they heal, I'm putting like ear plugs or something in my ear. You know what I mean? They got the swimmer's plug. I didn't even know about them until my wife got it for me after she she got the over kind of drops at the CVS and she came up with, 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 with the with the earplugs. She said, Oh, these are swimmers earplugs. Shove these in your ears next time you go in the water. I said, yeah, next time I go in the water, I, I can't promise you that there's gonna be a next time. Like I'm just gonna like stand in the water, but I'm not gonna dip my head in it. Because it's like it's true, you don't know what type of bacteria and particles and things are in that water. And from that time from when you're at the beach to when you get home, you know what I mean, and, and properly clean out your, your ears. And then the thing is, I'm gonna be completely honest with it, y'all. Let's make this left over here. Um, country Line Road. I'm gonna be completely honest with y'all. Coming from a from a beach, from that water that could be contaminated, and then coming to the RV, which we fill up a 55 gallon water tank, from where? From, from lines from these RV parks, we do use a filter, but still that water, I wouldn't trust it 100% either. So it's kind of scary. It's kind of scary, like, you know, like trying to clean your ear out with this water too. So it's like, no, 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 no. So after doing research, it was said that after you have an ear infection like this, you gotta keep your ear dry and free, and free of moisture up to three months because sometimes these ear infections last months at a time. I'm fortunate that I'm overcoming it, but it, be, it being known that it can last months at a time, meaning it can come back at any time. So I'm like on the verge, I'm on the edge of like battling a real serious thing here. So I'm fortunate enough to hear right now, both ears, whether it's partially, at least I can hear. It was tough doing tours with my ears clogged because all I hear is my voice extremely loud. I remember at the end of one of the tours, I had an aching headache just from my voice. Like put both of your hands over your ears and talk. Talk, go ahead and talk. Talk at room volume, loud. Say the ABCs, loud. And I, you know, coming from speaking in front of a classroom to doing these tours, I understand, especially being in the video production field, I understand that audio is important when it comes to doing these videos. Since I don't got a great microphone connected to this device, I at least should project my voice and speak loud and clear. So I can speak over the road noise, the road ambience, the air conditioning, and so on. So just imagine doing this tour, speaking loud, it's like I'm screaming in my brain. Oh man, one day I had the worst headache ever. Like right now, I kind of hear like a blaring, aching, popping noise from my left ear because I'm talking loud. But if I talk like this, then if I say, all right guys, on my left hand side, we got a house. Yeah, yeah, that feels good to me if I whisper, but y'all won't be able to hear anything. So I gotta, you know, you know meet y'all halfway. And it's a 50-50, take both things into consideration. We got a golf course on my right-hand side, y'all. But yeah, so that's a little synopsis. That's a little main commercial road. That's a little bit of Hernando County. It's a little bit of, of what I'm going through. I just wanted to show you guys a little something, something so that you guys, you know, 
get to see different areas and not just the main popular spots. Y'all can see some of the underdogs, some of the underappreciated spots because we know Orlando, Tampa, Miami and all those places are popular. But what about the underdogs like Spring Hill? All right, ladies and gentlemen, we just reached our one hour mark. I want to say thank you all for watching. I appreciate your support. Um, I thank you for you know taking the time to watch this to the end. If you made it here to the end of the video and you were able to withstand my voice, you are the real MVP. This is your homeboy Toon. This is Toon Dallas, Toon 205. Y'all know Toon be chilling. Right now, Toon is kind of partially deaf. <laughs> That's not funny, but this is your homeboy Toon, and I'm tuning out.